Hey, y'all. So I am putting out this little podcast um, in advance of a project that I've been working on for the past couple of weeks that I am almost done with. Um, and it's, it's a bit of a complex uh, conceptual project. So I'd like to just go over a few of the things that I've been looking at specifically. So firstly, what is a diptych? What is a cyanotype? Um, what is modernism in relation to photography? Um, and how can we use different styles and juxtapose them to start a conversation about what photography is, how it's advanced, and our different um, abilities and uses of it to both be documentary and artistic, and how those can overlap. So let's start out with what is a diptych? Now, a diptych is a piece of art that you put out that is made of two different parts. Um, so for example, say you are making a collage piece um, or a photography piece or a painting and you, the left side, and it's usually two distinct different works. So you put out one frame of two different works. Left work might be one thing that's conceptual. Right side might be one thing that is more aesthetic. Now it's, it's really super open-ended, but it's the combination of juxta and juxtaposition of two different pieces um, in one presentation of art. And now when you look online, there's a more specific, um, definition of this. Um, one of them is a, a painting, especially an altarpiece on two hinged wooden panels that may be closed like a book. So this, um, form of presenting is actually coming from really, really old origins, um, of very specific things that used to be seen pretty frequently. But nowadays, it's really just used to mean um, one art piece that is composed of two different, significantly different components. Um, so that is what a diptych is. So my piece that I'm working on is a series of diptychs. Um, now what I'm doing is I'm juxtaposing a very old style of photography with a very newer style of photography. So the older style, and this brings me to my next point, is a cyanotype. So I am doing cyanotypes of um, the plants that I find in one specific area of Golden Gate Park. Um, it's like that, that fern garden place that looks like there could be a dinosaur rocking around the corner any second. Um, I don't know who else has seen that place, but it is one of my favorite places. So let's get into what is a cyanotype. Um, so just a little brief history for you. In 1842, Sir John Herschel, who was the man who um, really coined the terms photography, positive, negative, and several others. So he was very influential in photography, even if he actually didn't do a ton of it himself. He was more of a scientist. Um, he created the first cyanotypes. So a cyanotype is a direct negative print without using a camera, just straight onto a piece of paper with just the use of exposing it to light. So you paint these two, if you wanna make your own, you have to paint these two different chemicals, you combine them, use a paintbrush or something to paint them onto a sheet of paper or a sheet of fabric. Um, and when these chemicals get exposed to specifically UV light, no other light works, trust me, I've tried. Um, so what people do, these were actually the original blueprint because it made things um, replicatable. Um, so if you put out this sheet of paper under UV light, it's gonna, when you first paint on the chemicals, it looks like this nice lime green. And once it gets exposed, it turns uh, bright cyan blue, hence the name cyanotype. So when you wanna document something using this, when you wanna photograph something using this, um, and as, as I am doing with plants right now, you're going to want to, as quickly as possible, put out the sheet of paper, put the plant on top and put some sort of like plexiglass or acrylic, um, acrylic sheet over it to press that plant down. You're going to want to put it in direct sunlight, wait between, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And the chemicals will go from that green to that blue and you're not going to be able to see underneath the, the um, plant. But once you wash it out, you'll see that whatever was covered up by the plant that I'm using will stay white. 
I mean, originally it was, you know, lime, but once you wash the chemicals out, it'll go back to the original color of the paper or fabric. And the rest of it will stay. There's a bright cyan blue. So that is one, that's the left half of my diptych. Um, using that very old, original method um, to photograph. And this is somewhat of an homage to Anna Atkins, who in 1843 put out the book um, Photographs of British Algae, colon, uh, Cyanotype Impressions. So she put out this book containing thousands of images of documenting, she was a botanist, documenting um, plants. So that's kind of where I'm getting this idea from. And then moving on to the right side of my diptych, um, I am juxtaposing the um, really old style with a more aesthetic new style. So once cameras um, really started developing, you could get all these different um, techniques and styles and our photography history is quite complex and really a reflection of um, culture at the time. So it's always rejecting the last style, always. Same with painting. Um, so I am looking at the modernist idea of photography, which is really playing with the ideas of um, you know, depth of field, aperture. Um, a lot of them are black and white. That's partially because it was in an age where a black and white film was mostly the thing. I'm doing digital, but either way, um, looking at form and shape and um, perspective. Uh, so I am photographing these same plants that I'm using in my cyanotypes while they are still on the branch, um, using a very, very low aperture. Um, there's gonna be a lot of blur in it. It's um, not a straight on image of this thing. A lot of times it focuses on one element of it. Um, so I'm taking those photographs, turning them black and white, um, cause let's be real, having bright blue with a bunch of colors is not gonna look great. Um, and putting that on the right side of the diptych. So, if when you look at it, you're going to see side by side a, a completely white and blue cyanotype direct print that shows the exact form, uh, or at least 2D form, of that plant. And on the right side, you're seeing a very modernist, black and white, um, you know, some of it's blurry, some of it's in focus. Uh, it's not taken from a direct angle. Um, so that's kind of the juxtaposition I'm playing with is both the old and the new and the abilities of the old and the new. Um, so I guess what I am liking to talk about a little bit is how we can use juxtaposition um, as a means to comment on photography, comment on the photographic practice and the importance of photography and how it has gone from a, a somewhat of a strictly documentary form to something that is really an art form that you can make um, strong aesthetic decisions about um, and present simple objects, not that plants are simple, they're actually quite complex, but simple forms in very complex um, conceptual ways. So I guess um, my question to everybody listening here is, what kinds of photography intrigue you if you've ever looked at more than just a modern form of it? Um, is it the, the strict documentary? Is it the aestheticism? Um, that's definitely something to consider, especially if you're going into photography. What really interests you about photography? So thanks for listening, guys. Um, I hope that was interesting, um, and I'm excited for everybody to see my final result. Bye.